folks, in this About Dale Laurel, we're going to talk about strong characters. I say I've always felt that even in a fantasy world, even in a world in which gods are doing some manipulating, the focus is always going to be on those moral characters. And the more real they feel, you know, the better. The more that, you know, a person can relate to them. There was a review for Inheritance of a Sword and a Path, or so, so, somewhere in the Earth and Stone series, that the writer said, you know, it's hard to look at any of these characters and not find some way that you don't relate to them. Even sometimes some of the bad guys, you can relate to them. And I felt that's important. One thing I try to do, um, maybe I picked this up from Miyazaki movies, but I try to put strong female characters in these books. You know, it's, on fair, I grew up with a lot of books where either there were strong male characters or overly sexualized female characters. And it's like, there's, there's more than that. There's a lot of female gamers. Even these days, there's a lot more female gamers, uh, fantasy fans, cosplayers. Yeah, I felt strong female characters is important. I did that with uh, Inheritance of a Sword and a Path. Uh, Katressa Bilal was actually the more seasoned adventurer who started off with that. You know, you got two boys, Tristan and Petro, fresh off the farm trying to go on an adventure. You had Kat as their guide trying to keep them alive and keep them in line. And even uh, people who read that series looked at one of my evildoers, Savannah, and said that they, you know, they loved her as, you know, as a bad guy. You know, it, they, they praised how I made Savannah. You know, it's one of my evil characters. As you go through the Earthrim trilogy, uh, you have other strong female characters that join later. Montagna, Sandra. These are also both young characters that are finding their strength, that are finding their place in the world as it goes through. And that was very important to me. Um, I, I felt that even as I write a lot of these characters, sometimes they take a, a shade of my personality or a portion of me that I had to grow up. You know, Sandra is shy. I was very shy growing up. I had to break past that. Uh, Montagna has a lot of determination. She might be guided in the wrong direction, but she's got a lot of determination and a lot to, I think, prove to herself as she's growing up. Now, Dooley is also a very strong female character. One of my strongest. Um, one of the reviews says it's rare to find a female character of such strength and depth. And Dooley was an unintentional revolutionary. You know, she, she felt her weakness. The reader sees some of her weakness, but she is a stronger character shining through because of that. And she makes changes in her people, not because she's trying to, she's trying to make changes for herself and finds herself at the center of a revolution in her culture. You know, that was very important. And people have said how she just feels like not the hero, not the anti-hero, she just feels real. And that's what I've been trying to establish. In Inheritance of a Sword and a Path, you have young Tristan. And he does have a path ahead of him, but uh, as kind of like a matrix saying, you know, it's not just showing the path, it's you have to walk the path. You see how Tristan is molded by his actions, how it shapes him, and how it enables him to make a decision that has been on his mind all book and has been holding him back. So you see that development. Um, his buddy Petrau. You know, many of my star characters in my books were characters that I've, that were uh, player characters that I role played in a game. So they might have appeared in, you know, you name it, tabletop, dice rolling, RPG, or an online game. A lot of these characters came from that. And Petrau from the Earthen Stones trilogy is different. He was made solely for that first book and that trilogy. Because I, you know, not none of my traditional characters kind of fit that. You know, this, he was boastful, 
and he was brought down to humility. Um, he ended up becoming a haunted character after his first adventure, a, a character that I try to actually put kind of some, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. Of course, it's the fantasy world. They don't know what that is. But Petrow is living that and having to deal with it. One of Petrow's biggest struggles is when he comes home from the adventure and then he's trying to readjust to life. You have a character like Sir Wilhelm, who appears early on in the inheritance of a sword and a path. You know, I, I always imagine him as, you know, a Sean Connery type kingly character. You know, as, that's pretty much high picture in my head. In fact, uh, someone that interviewed me asked me about that book. They they kind of said the same thing. It kind of pictured I mean, this like a, you know, a distinguished Sean Connery type character. And uh, he's one that I'm actually considering. You know, his we see him as he's older. His time is too short. I may do his story in a prequel sometime, a short story, but sometime I like to do that. In uh, the series that just came out here, October 2017, Pilgrims with Blades, the first book is technically named, you know, Pressed into Service. Pilgrims with Blades will be a, uh, a series, and each of those characters has a mystery that drives a life quest, and we're going to explore all of that. You have the El Sorceress right there, Alice, who is seeking knowledge on something, but you don't really know what. And you have you have Sir Crusoe, who is a knight. Well, knights are supposed to pay fealty to somebody, but he is out on his own, an exile, and you know we're bound to ask why. So these are characters too, which you know I before I was even writing an adventure for them, I was developing what drives them, what's their background. So I've always felt that those strong characters, that's that's got to be the foundation. You know, it's like a lot of people might say, hey, here's a fantasy story, here's a fantasy world based on some maybe popular world that's already out there. But you know what? You got to have the people the characters that can be related to in the book and that the reader will be like, yes, I want to find out about this person's story. Again, thanks for joining me. Uh, this was another in the series of about Dale Laurel talking about strong characters. I've got other videos coming out talking about the books and other different aspects of the world. Thank you for your likes and shares from my Facebook post to my Twitter to the YouTube gaming videos that I do. And if you like the books, one thing a uh, young early author like me needs is, you know, put some good reviews out there on Amazon and Goodreads. I thank you for your time watching this video. And I hope to these books and for the YouTube audience, my video games, I hope I entertain you. Thanks.